you, Sam. Hello, everyone. Thanks for being here with me exploring this scalability. My name is Yi. I'm a software engineer from Recall. I focus on the scalability and reliability. Today, we are going to check the scalability to reveal why it is scalable. And then we will try to identify the bottleneck which preventing us from scaling up further. And in the end, we would like to run a 4,000 nodes recluster. But first thing first, why scalability is important? Nowadays, the models becoming bigger and bigger every year. So the computation demand grows 10 times every 18 months. This requires way to scale up to handle this large workload. For example, OpenAI right now uses Ray to train ChatGPT, which is one of the largest language models in the world right now. They have a very, very big Ray cluster, and in each of the nodes, there is actors runs there. These actors coordinate with each other to finish the training. Besides this, the data generated every year increase exponentially. So nowadays, every year, there are more than 100 zettabytes of data generated. And ready to scale up to follow this trend too. Actually, Amazon nowadays uses Ray to process terabytes of data every day. They have contributed an open source software called DataCAD. DataCAD merges the datas offline for their data catalog. Cool. Now we know this is important. It's because the model is becoming bigger and bigger, and we need more and more computation. And also, the data generated every year grow exponentially. But what does this mean for Ray? What does scalability mean for Ray? It means Ray need to be able to manage large number of nodes. Because only when you have larger number of nodes, you should be able to run the large workloads. And then the second to handle or to run the large workloads. Inside Ray, it's about you need to have large number of actors or tasks which are doing the work. In Ray 2.0, we have, we have already been able to run 20,000 actors on a 2,000 Ray cluster. Our goal here is to double it. See, we want to run 40,000 actors on a 4,000 nodes Ray cluster. Cool. In the rest of this talk, we will review this design to see why Ray is scalable. And when we are doing the reviewing, we will also identify what's the bottleneck which prevents us from reaching this goal to a 4,000 nodes Ray cluster. And then after this, once we know what's the bottleneck, we will see what we have done to improve it and make us able to run a 4,000 node Ray cluster. Then we will see the demo running a 4,000 node Ray cluster with 40,000 actors and see what's the future work left. Let's do the uh, review first. This part is to refresh our knowledge about Ray, see what runs there, then we can understand the problem better. Firstly, Ray components. Suppose you have a Ray cluster with three nodes. You might want to know what runs on each of the nodes. There are two types of nodes, worker node and head node. On the head node, there is GCS, which is also known as Global Control Service. This is a controller inside Ray. It's a centralized controller. It's very important service doing all the coordination works between the nodes and between the release on each of the nodes. We will come to this later. On each of the nodes, they also have a relit really runs there, which has schedulers inside this and the object store. And on the hand node, you might have driver, and on the other node, you might have the workers doing the work. Yeah, this is a high level review of race uh, architecture. Let's check the GCS in more detail here. GCS, the centralized controller inside Ray. 
Optionally, you can have a DB at the back, so that in case of GCS failed or crashed, it can still recover from the data in the database. It's very important it covers the load management. Basically, it will monitor whether this node is alive or not and also maintain their membership. It also covers act management. Act creation goes to the GCS, destruction, and also recovery. Besides this, it also keep each of the relic have the latest resource view of each other. What does this mean? Inside relic, it has a scheduler, as we just mentioned. And this scheduler will use this view to see which node has the resource to run this task or actor. We will come to this part in more detail later. Actually, GCS do more things, but let's focus on these three because they are more important for the scalability. Next, relit. Relit run on each of the worker nodes. It manages the reworkers. Recovering the worker preparation, monitoring their liveliness. It also has object store. It stores the data. Then it has the task schedule inside it. Task schedule is what I just mentioned. It's a distributed schedule for the tasks. It uses the resource view to see which really should schedule this task or act. Okay. Now we have refreshed our knowledge about the cluster. Then let's see how the node is managed. Because we want to run a 4,000 nodes cluster, understand this is very important for us to see what's the bottleneck for uh, preventing us to go to 4,000 nodes. To add a node to the Ray cluster, you just call this command, restart. And then the load will send the load registration request to GCS. GCS write it to DB. As I mentioned, this is for fault, uh, fault tolerance. After this request has been processed by GCS, GCS will just do the health check and resource synchronization. Health check is to ensure this node is alive. And in case of this node fail, failed, GCS will do the failure recovery. And the resource synchronization is to make sure each, relate has, each load has the latest view of each other. It will do it for all the nodes. Summary. GCS is responsible for load registration and live list monitoring. And each node relies on GCS to update their local view. But here, we see GCS might become the bottleneck. Why? Because the load management goes through the GCS, and when the cluster size grows, GCS have to manage more and more loads. This might be an issue, and we will fix it later. We will go through this part in the next session. OK. Now you have already got a cluster with some nodes joining to this cluster. You want to start actors. Remember, we want to get 40,000 actors started. Then let's check how this is done inside Ray. To create an actor on the driver, you call this piece of code. Then you ha will have the actor created. How is this is done? Driver will first send this request to GCS to register this actor. And the actor manager inside GCS will do all the things. It will look up the, it will call the API from the resource manager to see what's the node have the resource creating this actor. And then, suppose here it's node 2. It will ask the relit on node 2 to create the reworker. So the resource manager makes use of the resource view reported by each of the nodes to see what's the place, what's the best place to schedule this actor. And here, once the reworker being created, it will be returned to the driver. Driver will send the actor creation task to the worker after this. You got the rework, uh, reactor. And uh, after the actor being created, all the rest of the calls is purely point to point. So the driver will send the task to the reactor directly. No involvement of other components. Summary. GCS plays an important role here. Actor creation goes to GCS. Scheduling also goes to GCS. 
And after it's created, all the test call is sent directly to the actor. So no involvement of other components and it's scalable. Cool. Now we have the view, the workload end to end. From adding a load to the cluster to how to create an actor. Summary here. After actor has started, communication is point to point. It's scalable, this part. Scheduler relies on the class resource view to make scheduling decisions. And for this part, it might become an issue. For example, remember just now, we created the actor on the value two, but sometimes if the view is not updated, it's the actor creation, uh, the scheduling might fail. And we will see one example about this later. And GCS is very critical in managing the nodes and actors. And it is also the place responsible for broadcasting the resource view across the cluster. OK, now we know everything. Then what, what can go wrong? For example, if we want to run 40,000 actors on a 4,000 node cluster, what can go wrong? Which prevent us from doing this? It's easy to load. GCS might be overloaded. White might be overloaded. Now we run 40,000 actors. That's a lot, a lot of workloads. This all goes to the GCS. Besides this, right now there are 4,000 nodes. GCS need to manage this number of nodes, which is also very big. It's a large cluster, so GCS will be overloaded. But what will happen when GCS is overloaded? The first thing that might happen is that GCS will fail to manage the nodes. What does this mean? It means even the load is alive, sometimes GCS will make a mistake. GCS will think this node is dead. Something goes wrong here. And the components goes wrong is the health check part. We will come to this later. Another part that might go wrong is that the class resource view is not updated in time because of GCS is overloaded and it doesn't have any resource to do this. And when the view is not updated, remember, the scheduling needs the resource view to schedule the task around. And if the view is not updated in time, scheduling decision might not be good. And that's the components that can go wrong, the snapshot-based broadcasting, and we also need to fix this. OK. Now we have understand what goes wrong. And uh, we actually have done some work to improve this and uh, enable us to run a 4,000 nodes cluster. Let's see what's the improvement here. We did two improvements. We changed the protocol of the health check from the push-based one to the pull-based one. We also changed the protocol of resource broadcasting from the snapshot-based to the incremental one. Let's check the first one. Pull-based health check. So before the change is push-based, so what could go wrong here? The mechanism actually is very simple. I mean, this is before the change. It's very simple. It's really to just report, oh, I'm alive to GCS. And once GCS gets this, this information, it will think this reality is alive. But if some really fail to do this reporting for, for example, for 30 seconds, then this GCS will think this reality is alive, uh, is, is dead. And it will remove this reality from the cluster and just let other relays know this one. This is very simple. But it can go wrong. We observe when GCS is overloaded, false positive is very easy to happen. It means even this reality is alive, GCS is still think this is dead. It's pretty bad, but why this can happen? Really, it is alive, right? Really, it will do the reporting. The false positive happens then because really it cannot report their live list to GCS. But because GCS just doesn't have resource to process this message. This message arrived to the GCS, but GCS just don't have any resource to process it. For example, it, it cannot process the message within 30 seconds, and it will think, oh, this unit might not send the request to me. 
and it cannot process because it's overloaded. The cost is very high for this mistake. It equals with the load failure. It means all the things on that node will fail. You lose the object, you lose the actor, you also lose the task on that node. And then the failure recovery inside the will start, but it will just run everything again. It's very bad. We did some improvements for this one. We changed it to the pool-based one. So compared with before, now GCS will pull the healthiness from the release. Let's check how this is work. Now GCS will just ask each Reddit whether you are alive or not. And if some Reddit haven't replied, for example, for several times, the GCS will think this Reddit is dead. This is just a change. It's very simple. And then remove the Reddit from the cluster, let the other Reddit do this one. But this is working. Why this one is working? It's because GCS is easy to be overloaded in a large Ray cluster. And in this case, what will happen when GCS is overloaded? When it overloaded, it will just send the live list check less frequently. It's still not that good, but it's much better compared with marking this really dead. And in this case, for example, sometimes really might be overloaded, right? Then in this case, really might not be able to send the request. Some false positive might happen. But it's fine, because when the really is not responsive, we can think it's not functioning well, and it's okay to kill it. Another thing is that really it's usually not that easy to be overloaded in a large Ray cluster compared with GCS, because GCS is a centralized component. Okay, now we fix the node issue. We can run a 4,000 node cluster, but we want to run some actors on this one, right? And the source broadcasting is the component preventing us from doing this. Let's see what goes on here. Before the improvement, we have a snapshot-based resource broadcasting inside of it. Let's check how this goes, and then we will see what can go wrong. Suppose you have a cluster with two nodes, Relit 1 and Relit 2. After they just join the cluster, they don't know each other. So Relit 1 doesn't have any information about Relit 2. Relit 2 doesn't have any information about Relit 1. Here, Relit 1 have one CPU. Relit 2 have no CPU resource. After they join in the cluster, they need to report their local snapshot to the GCS first. After the reporting, GCS will know the view of each other, and then GCS do the broadcasting. GCS will send the snapshot of the cluster back to each of the relit. After this, relit will know each other, have their view, looks pretty good. And then the cluster goes idle, and the reporting and broadcasting happens every 100 million seconds by default. So we report again, broadcasting again. Reporting again, broadcasting again. Reporting again, broadcasting again. It doesn't look good, right? Because it happens every 100 million seconds. And even though there is no new information in the reporting and the broadcasting, so that's the problem. That's the first problem we need to fix. OK. Now let's continue. Now the Relit 1 wants to start a Relit task with one CPU here. And then it just started locally because it has resource to run it. And then Relit 1 updated its local view, so no CPU left in Relit 1. Later, Relit 2 checks Relit 2 here. It still thinks Relit 1 has one CPU because it haven't received any updates. Relit 2 also wants to start a Relit task with one CPU. Then this will fail. It failed because of the, mass, uh, the resource view inside Relit 2 is stale. And this is the bad scheduling decisions. Later, Reporting happens as before, then broadcasting happens, and really to update local view, and then it notices there is no place to create one CPU task. All the scaler comes in, allocate one node, and then we have really three at the beginning, 
really three and really one two, then know each other. We don't really three then have the view of really one and two, and uh, really one and two then have the view of really three. Reporting happens as before, broadcasting happens. They have their view, and then really two will be able to create a task on really three. Everything looks good, except this part. We can see here now, during broadcasting, there are nine messages being sent. Before really three join, there are four messages being sent in a broadcasting. So here, the complexity is n square, where n equals the uh, number of nodes in this cluster. And what makes it worse is that it happens every 100 million seconds. So it doesn't scale. Summary here, broadcasting and reporting happens every 100 million seconds. Even though there is no change in the message. You might want to know why we do this. It's because doing this is very simple for the failure case. For example, if you lose some message or some message arrive out of order, it's very simple to fix. You just use whatever arrived. Eventually, it will be cracked. But it's very bad. It doesn't scale. Besides this, broadcasting always sends the cluster resource snapshot. It's very, comp uh, com it's very complicated. It uses a lot of resource. It doesn't scale too. We fix these issues in the new protocol. It's called incremental resource broadcasting. Problem one. It happens every 100 million seconds. In the new protocol, we change it. Reporting and broadcasting only happens when there is a change. Problem two, cluster snapshot will be broadcasted. Now in the new protocol, only incremental data will be broadcasted. OK, let's go through the previous example to see what goes on. Uh, what, what's going here? Suppose previous setup, really one and two, they don't know each other. After joining the class, uh, do reporting, and then later, just as we do the broadcasting. But notice here, just as only sends the incremental view back to the uh, really, so it only sends really two's view to really one and really one's to really two. So this saves some messages. And then they have each other's view. Later, the cluster goes idle. Remember previously, it happens every 100 million seconds, the reporting and broadcasting. But, when, but now, when the cluster is idle, it do nothing. Why do you do nothing? Because no incremental view will be created. So no, nothing needs to be done here. This is much better compared with before. Let's continue. Now, really, to want to start a task, it updates local view. Now here, really, to one will do the reporting. Notice here, really, to do nothing, because there is no change in really to local view. Only the incremental view will be reported. And then GCS will do the broadcasting, and then send it back to the really to one, and he only send the really to one's view to really two. So here, only incremental view will be broadcast here to release. The later really to want to start a one CPU task, it doesn't have any resource in the cluster, or scalar trigger in, we got really three, they don't know each other, and then really three will report its local view, because that's the incremental thing for this cluster. GCS gets the view during the broadcast. Notice here, GCS only sends really three's view to really to one and two. And send really to one and two's view to really three. So this is much better compared with before. You might think like, OK, what if there are a lot of changes uh, in the local relit? It means there will be a lot of messages, right? It might be even worse compared with before. So here, in terms of the implementation, some optimization or batching has been done to rate it. Then in this way, we limit the number of messages. OK, this is a benchmark result 
before and after the improvement? We can see before the improvement, the network usage is really high. It's 3.5 gigabytes for a 2,000 node cluster. And it doesn't scale because in the high node, it uses 1.6 gigabytes uh, per second. But after the improvement, we can see here, the network usage has dropped by 10 times. And because now, after the improvement, the resource broadcasting happens in time, and also it reduces a lot of work from the GCS, so the actor creation throughput increased by three times. Okay. Now that's everything, all the improvements we have done to scale up to 4,000 nodes. Here's a summary. Health check. We changed it from the push-based protocol to the pool-based one. Before the change, GCS is easy to make false positive uh, decision. But after the change, in the worst case, GCS just send less, uh, less health check. Another one is the resource broadcasting. Before the change, the whole snapshot will be reported every 100 milliseconds. But after the change, only incremental view will be reported. Cool. Now let's see the demo. In this demo, we will run uh, 40,000 actors with 4,000 nodes and 10 actors per node. I want to do the live demo, but this workload is very long, so I have a recorded one. Hello, everyone. Here I'm going to do a demo to show the scalability of RIP. This demo is done on any scale hosted RIP cluster. In this demo, I'm going to run a 4,000 node RIP cluster. Let's check the setup first. For the head node, I will use M524X large. And for the work node, I will use M5X large. And I will have 4,000 work nodes. Each work node it will have two virtual CPUs. So in the end, I will have 8,000 CPUs. And for the high node, I set the real CPU number to be zero so that all the actors will be launched on the work node. Okay, cool. Let's start the cluster. Now the cluster is launching. Let's check the event log for the progress. We can see the cluster started to launch at 9.49. Let's wait a while until the cluster is fully launched. Finally, the cluster finished to launch and it ends at 9.54. And we start at 9.49. So we only use five minutes to launch a 4,000 nodes rig cluster. This is really fast and really impressive. This is an AnyScale proprietary feature, and the team has done a lot of work to optimize the cluster startup time. Okay, let's check the Ray cluster status before we run the script. Let's run Ray status. And we can see we have a 4,000 nodes Ray cluster launched with one high node here. We have 8,000 CPUs, and all these CPUs come from the worker nodes. In this test, we will launch a lot of trivial actors, and each will use 0.2 CPUs. And since we have 8,000 CPUs, so we can launch 40,000 actors in total. We will do the launch uh, with the rate limit. We will launch the actors up to 2,000 in parallel. This is the for loop, for loop body launching the actors. This part is doing the rate limiting, and this is launching the actors. This is calling the actor method and get the object ref. Then in the end, we wait for all the actors to be ready and print the total time used to launch all these actors. Okay, let's give it a try. Let's wait for a while until the script finished. Now everything finished. Now let's run the status to check the status of this new cluster. Now we see all the CPUs has been used. 
Okay. Now we can run a 4,000 nodes we cluster with 40,000 actors. But what if we want to scale further? There are two directions because GCS is still the bottleneck. The first direction is that we can reduce GCS responsibility, for example, just redesign the actor creation protocol to avoid interacting with GCS. Or we can improve GCS performance, like shard it or make it stateless. OK, that's everything for today's talk. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Yi. Unfortunately, we're out of time, so please just uh, ask some for questions. Uh, but thank you again. Please submit any feedback through the Ray Summit app. There's a feedback button. Uh, thank you, Yi. Yeah. Thank you, Sam.